What's your forget this, I quit story? Story 1. Started my first job at 15 as a dishwasher for a friend's family's new Korean restaurant. They were my neighbors. My typical workday was 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. on the clock. Afterwards, I was expected to stay and help close shop, and instead of getting paid for those extra three hours, I was given a meal for compensation. To be fair, there are laws prohibiting minors from working too long or too late, and honestly, I didn't mind it as the food was incredible. After about a year, I'm now 16, and due to the minimal wait staff, was expected to work as a waiter slash busboy in between dishes. Fair enough, I was getting sick of the same old, same old anyways, so I came in during the week to start training, and since they knew I was already familiar with the menu and whatnot, I wasn't a shadow. I was just on my own and winging it. I made a mistake, in essence, not remembering soup or salad, so I went back upstairs to ask, and when I returned with my answer, I was insulted by my manager for not taking this seriously enough. All right. A couple months go by, and I'm waiting tables and dishwashing, all while being micromanaged by my manager. Well, one weekend, a Mardi Gras parade was being held downtown where the restaurant is located, so it'd easily be one of our busiest days that year. I was scheduled for 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., but they asked if I'd come in that morning around 8 or so. About an hour or two into my new shift, there was a mountain of dishes I was being expected to maintain while also waiting tables. My manager walks into the back where I am, and the dialogue goes like this. Leifi, what are you doing? Washing dishes? Go ask table six if they need a refill. Yes, ma'am. I walk out the back into the front of the store while she's tailgating me and pick up the pitcher of water. As I pick it up, she asks, do you even know what you're doing? At this point, I'm pretty fed up and kindly respond with, yeah, I know how to pour water. She didn't like that and told me that I need to look at her with respect and that if I didn't like it here, I should just leave. So I left them with mountains of dishes and thirsty customers. Know your worth. I think it took him a while, but he finally decided to consider his worth, or he finally realized what his worth was. It just seems like they were taking advantage of this poor kid. How much was he getting paid anyway? Was it even enough to live off of? Story 2. I was working in a particular role for a small charity. It was already a busy role, but then due to changes within the company, my role got ridiculous. I was the senior manager looking after the budgets and accounts and acting as an accountant so suddenly, so had to teach myself all about charity tax law, which is not easy. I was managing marketing, media, communications, strategic implementation, a reception, and all customer service, a physical and online shop, 10 members of staff, legal compliance, including insurance and data protection, health and safety, HR, reporting and end-of-year audits, preparing papers for and attending trustee meetings, procurement, as well as general meetings, to the point where my job had gone way beyond my original job description anymore. Anyway, despite all the extra responsibilities, my boss still expected me to have time to do everything to an extremely high standard and couldn't possibly understand that there would be any reason that I was overwhelmed apart from me being junk. Strange how everyone in that place also complained about being overworked and that at one point the staff were going to go to the trustee board to see if they could get him replaced. It was always everyone else's fault. He sat me down at my 12-month probation meeting and said that I wasn't doing well enough to be given the job permanently, so he wanted to extend my probation by another three months, in which time he must see improvements and what did I think I needed to improve. I said that I had been telling him for months what I needed to improve, which was for him to take the fact that everyone was overworked worked seriously and his expectations of what a human being could achieve were ridiculous at best, which was apparently never going to happen, so I quit. He said he didn't want that. I said I did and just quit. It had been on my mind for a while, but that pushed me over the edge. A part of me wanted to stay, to go to the probation hearing and let everyone in HR know exactly what he was like, but I was just so done with the whole thing. Best decision ever. I now have an amazing job I love for a different charity that actually values what I do, and it feels great. I'm really glad she was able to realize her worth. I'm really glad she was able to find a job that she loved to do. This boss is almost cartoonish in his behavior. I think he thinks this person had no other choice but to comply. Maybe the boss thinks that this person depended on this job so much that they would be willing to do everything just to make a paycheck. Miscalculation on his part. Story 3. I interviewed for a corporate accounting role because public accounting was much less pay. 
and a lot more hours. Was told in the interview that it was show up between 8 to 9, leave between 4 to 5. There'd be no working late nights or having to work on weekends, which was great. I took the job, and within two months realized they were lying through their teeth. First off, there was absolutely no training on their processes. I was given enough work for three people, with no direction on how to do it. My manager was so scatterbrained he could never give me any help when I asked. No one talked for eight hours a day, and it was just an unbelievably bad work culture. I'd get to work usually at 8.30 and leave at 4.30 while eating lunch at my desk. I came in one day and was told, since you're leaving so early, I can only hope you're working from home. Then the next week, we're told we have to come in for a full day. Saturday, because we had New Year's Day off that Monday. My final straw was when I left at 2.30 one day for a doctor's appointment. When I came in the next day, my manager pulled me into a room and said that I didn't have enough accrued PTO to do that, and he was going to dock my pay in a salaried position. Went in the next day, told him it wasn't working out, and put my two weeks in. On my last day, he told me I could leave at 11.30, so I did. When I got my final paycheck, he docked my pay for the remainder of that day. Luckily, the recruiter who got me the job followed up to ask what happened, and I was completely open and honest with her. Apparently, that manager has a very high turnover rate for the position I was in, and the recruiter told me that the CFO is looking into replacing him. I wish I could take comfort in that last statement, but he was looking into replacing him? Did he replace him? Or did this guy just end up failing upward? It sounds like no one paid attention to this guy enough to look into replacing him. At least this worker figured out what was going on and put in her two weeks before anything bad happened. I mean, anything worse. Story 4 after taking a few days off work while my father was having a brain tumor removed and still checking emails and attending conference calls from the hospital, my boss gave me a new project. On a Thursday afternoon, she gave me a Monday morning deadline for a project that would take six to eight days to complete. I worked 16 hours a day to get it done. When we met on Monday, she asked how my weekend was. I worked all weekend. Then she asked if I got to visit my dad in the hospital. No, I didn't get a chance because I worked all weekend. A couple weeks later, she pulled me into a meeting and said, I feel you were resentful because you had to work and felt really good when your dad was sick. Maybe you're just tired. Are you tired? She'd also make comments when I would leave the office on time. Not early, on time. It's great that you just get up and go when your day is over. I'd like to go because I have a daughter, but you don't have any kids and you just leave at the end of the day. Um, yeah, shrew. I don't live here. I don't go home and sit in a dark room counting the hours until I get to come back here. I'm also not curing cancer. Nothing we do matters to anyone outside of here. I give you 100% when I'm here, but when my day is done, it's freaking done. I no longer work there. Wow. First, the boss gives this person work even though the father is in the hospital with a brain tumor, then tries to guilt this person for leaving on time by saying she has a family. Sounds more like your family doesn't matter, but mine does. I wonder how often the boss actually sees her family. Story 5 was volunteering in a local charity shop at the weekend. As it turns out, most of the non-paid volunteers were conscripted from job seekers or community service or whatever. They had to turn up to get their welfare payments, etc. Anyway, I'd been there about six months and was hard graft at times, moving sofas around the shop, up and down three floors. It was a nice sunny day and I was taking my lunch break out back sitting on a sofa at the loading bay doors in view of a public car park, eating a sandwich with my feet up on the railing. All of a sudden, some woman who I've never seen before starts wagging her finger at me like I'm a naughty kid, then shouting at me in a disgusting tone, Get up, young man! How dare you! She kept ranting on. I'm like, who the heck is this? She can get bent. Slowly I get up and move inside. Turns out she was the area manager. She ticked me off so bad. I didn't really have an issue with what she was asking. It possibly didn't give a good impression. It was the way she was speaking to me I had a problem with. I think she thought I was the typical conscript who could be abused without recourse, as they had to stay there and take the abuse in order to get their payments. Some customers in the shop heard how she spoke to me and they backed me up, so I knew I wasn't nuts. Told her she could stick with my volunteering and I got the heck out of there. Never went back. Made me think why should I give up my free time to help this shrew on a fat salary hit her targets. I doubt she had a charitable bone in her body. I wrote a two-page letter of complaint to the head office, but never did send it. Kinda regret that. He should have definitely sent that letter. Maybe it wouldn't have done anything, but maybe it would have. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You should have taken that shot. Give her some grief. Story 6 
working at a tech support call center. I put in for a day off for my birthday a month in advance. Boss forgot to process my request and said I couldn't get it off when I asked about it closer to the date, saying something about time off requests being locked due to upcoming trainings. Those training sessions were two weeks after my birthday. I tried to take three days off for my boyfriend and to go on a trip for our anniversary. I wrote it down on the request calendar a month and a half before we were to leave. I come back to double check that I requested the right days and the owner scribbled my request out and wrote new store opening. No requests. I was ticked and didn't see why we couldn't request time off when the other store was an hour away and none of us were asked to be there for the grand opening, but whatever. I rescheduled the hotel for three weeks later, lost a deposit, and spent my anniversary working a 12-hour shift. The kicker? The owner didn't have his permit straight, so the grand opening was delayed by almost two months. I rescheduled my vacation for a nonsense reason, and that nonsense reason was rescheduled. I feel you. This boss just doesn't care. It almost seems like he'll just target people whenever he wants. From the way this story is told, it looks like the boss is giving people hope right before he dashes it. I hope this person no longer works there. Story 7. My wife has one. Her boss suddenly became obsessed with bringing in as many new people as possible. Oddly, he seemed to forget about retaining his current workers. Many, like my wife, were very experienced at this point. You would think that they'd be considered the most valuable employees of the group. My wife had settled into a nice Monday to Friday schedule with good hours, 20 hours, 5 days. Suddenly, her boss pulls her in for a meeting and says, Most of the new employees can't work nights or weekends due to personal conflicts. I'll need you to switch to a 1 to 9 schedule and work Saturdays. My wife was caught off guard and responded, When you hired me, I told you that I had conflicts in the evenings and weekends and that I would be able to work within that schedule. The boss got all serious and said, Listen, I think I've been more than generous and accommodating of your schedule needs. I think it's time for you to show us some of that same flexibility. My wife started crying immediately and stormed back to her desk. She called me and said that she thought she needed to quit but wanted to make sure she wasn't crazy. After listening to what happened, I said that her boss could go to hell and she should never look back. She took her free water bottle and never returned. Story 8. My boss had my crew and I cut corners on a job. I was fairly new to the position and took what he said as the way it was supposed to get done. Inspectors then came and checked the job because of an unrelated screw-up by another company and in turn found out what we had done. Boss then blamed the whole thing on me and denied he ever told me to do it when it was done. Spent the next two days replacing all previous work to the way it should have been. Boss then told me that he was not going to pay me for the days of work, 14 hours each day, because I was fixing my my mess-ups, all the while during the two days getting called a freaking idiot and a liar. Forget you, I quit. Short story, boss tried to cut corners, got caught, blamed it on me, then refused to pay me to fix it to try and recoup some of the losses he took. I quit. Story 9. I was the new sous chef at a country club. Chef wouldn't let anyone but himself do the ordering. His ordering method was to go over a sheet of paper hanging on the line where people wrote down what we were out of. Not what we were nearly out of, but what we were completely out of. Anytime I'd try to add items that we were close to out of on, he'd lose his cool. We were constantly out of things. One day, we had a huge Easter breakfast event. Dippy Chef didn't order near enough eggs, and we were out of all sorts of other random items. I was out front making omelets for members, ran out of eggs, and stood around for 15 minutes waiting for more while the members became increasingly frustrated, then angry. Went to the back to see Chef yucking it up with the FOH manager, handed him my apron, and told him to pound sand. Was at that job for less than two weeks. Edit, Sue. How does that make sense? Does this chef not even think about thinking ahead? Does he think he's cutting costs? I don't think that chef cared for that job. Story 10. Arrived at the bar to work my shift, only to discover that the owners had sacked my manager because there was, in their view, too much wastage. At the time, he was recovering from major surgery on his arm. He had three young children and an eight months pregnant wife. They thought they were losing money because not every drop of beer poured went into somebody's drink, which is just a fact of life in a bar. And not because their idle tow rag son slash brother, father-son owner duo, kept coming in with his mates and demanding we give them drinks that that they didn't have to pay for. Quit on the spot. Went to the manager's son's christening a while later. A year or two after that, was told the bailiffs had come to visit the bar and left with quite a lot of furniture. Couldn't have happened to bigger people. Story 11. I was at my dream job building high-performance Corvettes. There were a lot of downsides. No W-2, no benefits, long hours, 
you break it, you buy it. Then they introduced an efficiency measurement, where if you were not fast enough, you had to work Saturday to make up for it. Measuring efficiency in custom work leads to corner cutting, and in general is impossible, as it's custom. Then I had to push the shop owner's car in to fit some things. It took me two hours to wrap up the car I was working on, push it out, move two other cars, get the forklift started, and get the car in. It didn't have a motor yet. All not chargeable. All not my fault. All supposed to be made up on Saturday. I quit the next day. Story 12. I was in the same position for two years and was actively looking at other positions within the same company. Bosses knew about it. It was just time for a change and to advance my career. Great opportunity came up and I was offered the position. However, my current leadership blocked me because I received a promotion six months prior. That promotion was literally an automatic email that said, congrats, you're now level two instead of level one because I had met my sales attainment and completed all my yearly training. Literally, an automated email stopped me from getting promoted promoted, and bosses said I had to wait another 18 months, left that company, and went to a competitor doing the same thing for better pay and significantly more support. Yet another example of bosses taking advantage of people. Machines over men, apparently. A lot of bosses seem to hide behind automated systems and computers and such. It's no wonder we hate these things, even though we depend on them. Story 13. Waitressing at a small cafe. The owner was also the manager slash cook. One day we were in the weeds, getting thrown around left and right, and finally when it slowed down, the other line cook messed up. So the owner, who already had several screaming meltdowns, picked up a plate and throws it right at the server alley. It broke on the wall near my head, so I took my apron off and waddled my pregnant butt on home. Forget that. It closed a few weeks ago, which wasn't surprising. Story 14. I used to work at a bowling alley in the cafe kitchen when I was like 19. One particular night, I was the only one in the kitchen during a slammed rush. I got everything out, somehow, in a timely manner, cleaned the kitchen, then went for a smoke. The GM walks out a minute later and proceeds to ream me, telling me I'm a lazy, no-good piece of poo, etc., etc. I finish my smoke, go back in, pull off my uniform shirt and name tag, set it on the cafe counter, and walk out the front door without a word. Forget you, Paul. Story 15. I proved to the CIO using math that the help desk could not lower its abandonment rate to an acceptable point without hiring more people. She responded by telling me that my team just didn't have enough discipline and then I got written up. I quit the next day and told my team they will replace me with a manager whom the CIO will let hire more people. I was right. It sounds like this person was just squeezed out. Did this person have any recourse after that? Was there anyone she could have reported this to? Hell, at that point, I'd even consider a lawsuit. Story 16. Many, many years ago, I worked at a place called Atomic Burrito. I only worked there for four days. I was washing dishes, and the manager walked by and started yelling at me for using soap. He said, soap costs money, and we were just putting the same food back in the pans anyway. I quit right there. Nope the frick right out the door. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.